Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my pop-up over control series. So if you haven't watched part one yet, what are you doing here? Go watch part one first and then come on back. All right, yesterday we figured out how to get our active control, active form, set the coordinates, open up the modal form there and send the value to it. So now when I click over here, I get it over there, puts the value. And when I click over here, it gets it there and puts the value. Now we just got to code this button so that when I change this value and hit this, it closes this form and puts the value there. Now the problem is, is that when I open up this form, it now no longer knows what the active control and active form were that opened it. So we have to tell it, or we have to store that information in a temporary variable. I like using temp vars. So let's use temp vars so we can tell this form where it's got to send its value back to. And we can do that right here. Okay, we can say temp vars and let's give it a name like uh, calling control, the control that called it, right? Equals active, active control dot name. And we also need the form name temp vars because you could have a control on a different form with the same name, right? Uh, calling form equals active form dot name. So now we know where that value has got to go back to. So now we just have to go over to the other form, the modal form, this guy, right click design view, go into the buttons code, build event. And oh, I don't want to, I don't want to call it command four because then Alex will yell at me. So let's go give our button a name. I always forget that until I get into the VBA editor and I'm like, oh yeah, got to rename the button, All right? Command four. I hate that. So we'll just call it the close return button. Okay. All right, now we can go right click build event and in here we'll put our code. We're going to dim some variables first. We got dim form name as a string and control name as a string. Those are the actual names. Then we're going to need some objects to, to work with. So dim frm as a form and ctl as a control. Okay, now when the calling form ran its function, it set those temp vars with the form name and the control name so that this guy knows where to put them back to. So form name, we're just getting those temp bars, right? Temp bars calling form. I cannot type today. And control name equals temp bars calling control. And I forgot, I really can't type today, folks. I think I have not had enough coffee yet today. <laughs> My typing speed and accuracy improves as a direct proportion to the amount of caffeine in my system. All right. Now that we've got the names, let's set objects to those variables. So set FRM equals forms. That's the forms collection, right? It's a collection of all the forms in the system. Which form do we want? Form name. Okay. You could put forms customer F in quotes forms order F in quotes, or if it's already a string variable, it's just forms form name. Now that we have a form object, we can use the controls object, which is a collection of all the controls on a form to point to the specific control we need. So set CTL equals FRM control name, just like that. You could say, if you wanted to, you could say frm.controls control name, if it makes more sense to you, but that's a shorthand notation, just like that. It's frm, a form object, and then control name like that. Okay? And remember, when you set it, you gotta forget it. So set frm equals nothing, set ctl equals nothing, just to clean up your memory. All right. So we've got the form, we've got the control, we know where the value has to go to, let's set its value ctl.value equals whatever that return value is. All right, and that is a field on this form. Okay, so send that back to wherever you came from. And now we're basically done. Do command dot close ac form me dot name, which is the name of the current form. And I always like to throw in there ac save yes. That is just for you, the developer. That says, 
If you close this form, it's just gonna save any changes you made. Because if you don't put that, it's gonna prompt you, which I think is annoying. And you're almost never gonna say AC save no. Because your users don't have access to change forms, right? You've locked them down. They're using an ACCDE file. So I just wanted, if I made any changes, yeah, go ahead and save them. And that's it, save it. Yes, debug compile once in a while. We're gonna close it, close it, close everybody, right? Close it, open it, click. I'm gonna type in Picard, hit my closed form and return value, and boom, Picard goes right there. Isn't that nice? Isn't that special? And the form's dirty, so you can still hit escape if you don't like the change. Close that, and because and, modal forms will, will force that navigation pane to close, which your users don't have access to that anyways. So when you click on it here, it's nice and smooth. Canada. Oh, let's make this the default button, right? So when this guy opens up, right-click, design view, we're going to make this be the default button. So when the user presses enter, it pushes it. Save it. Close it. Click it, USA, enter, and it goes right back there. Click, Rick, enter, and it goes right back there. Isn't that cute? One more little enhancement we're gonna make. Now, every time you wanna put this in a field, okay, you gotta click on it, you gotta go to events, you gotta come in here, you gotta go to here, you gotta put pop up over control in there. Wouldn't it be nice if, let's get rid of these, wouldn't it be nice if this was a function we could just use everywhere? Because there's nothing in here that relates to the customer form. I wrote it that way intentionally. Yeah, we're referring to modal form, but that's the same form that we're opening. And you could even change that if you wanted to, folks. You could put a form name in here of the form. Oh, someone's beaming in. If you had different forms, like for text and a different one for a date picker and different one for whatever, you could specify what you wanted in here or even look at the data type of the field that you're opening. That's a whole different story. But this is just the only thing in here that's unique to the form. So we could take this whole thing, cut it out, go over to a global module like this guy, right? A global system module. We could paste that in here, right? And now we're gonna change this to public. Now everybody can use it. And I'm gonna change this to function. Now we can use it as an event handler. If you don't know what an event handler function is, if you make it a public function, you can just refer to it like that, right, as a function. And go watch this video for more information. So now I could say pop up over control pretty much anywhere in the entire database. Watch this. This guy and this guy, I held down the shift key, right, selected them both. Their on-click event is going to be equals, you got to start off with the equal sign, pop up over control. See, it shows up in the IntelliSense now. And then I put my op empty parentheses at the end of it. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Oop. Oh, my pop-up box got huge. When I'm working with it on my own from like my database and stuff, I make it much, much bigger. So that's what's in there. Okay. Now, save it, close it, open it, and watch this. Click. See, it's an event handler now. Now, watch how easy it is to add it to a different field. Right? All I have to do is come into here. Put that in as the on-click event. Whoops. Just like that. And of course, you want to change that color to a little format painter. See? And now every field you want can be click. Okay? You could go to other forms. You could go to the customer list form. Right-click. I, I think this one's read-only, though, isn't it? Let me see. Oh, no, it's not. You can do it here, too. Right-click. Design view. Let's take last name. I'll make it blue. I'll put the on click event as that. Save it. Close it. Open it. I'll pick uh, Reynolds. Change it to XXX. And there you go. See? And we could go to the, I don't know, go to the order form. All right, let's design view. Let's change the Starship parts, the description here. Again, we'll do format. We'll make it blue. On click. Bang. Save it. Close it. Uh, and then something and there you go now here's where the problem comes in subforms subforms are a whole different ball of beans ball of wax bag of beans whatever analogy you want to put in there subforms require a lot more coding because you got to figure out if it's a subform first 
then you got to figure out the subforms coordinates inside the main form. Then you got to figure out which row you're on. Yeah, it's it's a lot, but but I've already done it, and I will be showing how to do it or how it's done in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. There's hundreds of them now. Gold members can download these databases and you get access to my code vault where I got lots of code, including this stuff and lots more. And everybody gets some free training. So check it out. But here's my sample database. I used yellow in mine when I was building it and I didn't put the send the value in. This is my, my prototype database. I was playing around with it for about an hour or so last night. Cassandra posted something in the forums trying to do this. And I'm like, oh, now I got to figure it out. So I knew how to do it with a regular form. But when you're working with a sub form, there's a lot more involved, right? Because the, there's different sections in here. You got to figure out if it's in the footer, what row you're on. It's, it's a bit of a pain, but I figured it out. So we'll be doing that in the extended cut. And in Access Developer 51, I'm gonna teach you how to take all of this stuff and turn it into a class module. But that, my friends, is a tale for another day. And that is gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.